so much, Emily. Thank you so much. It's a great pleasure to be here. Thanks to all the organizers for the uh, invitation and having me with you this afternoon. Um, well, I have discovered probably a few years ago this whole topic, but I'm, I'm quite lazy, so I didn't follow the uh, topics. And for me, it was the occasion to see where we are. So, um, you know, of course, I will stick to the legal aspects and the perspective of the uh, sea law. So, uh, in the framework of the uh, London Convention, namely, and this London Protocol of 1996. Um, right. So, as we already said, we need to find the moods and the ways to uh, find solutions which will help us to get adapted, adapted, uh, you know, in front of climatic changes and behaviors uh, which will mobilize the actions there. So, uh, of course, all the states try to find information and they find that IMO the London uh, Protocol and the amendments uh, to the 1996 London Protocol to allow CO2 sequestration in seabed. Um, so, you know, they developed all of a series of actions to uh, allow activities which uh, normally were banned by the London Convention and almost by this protocol. So, in a certain way, we uh, need to, you know, get, go forward those juridical obstacles. We need to develop researches on these opportunities that we have, you know, to uh, choose several options. And first, before finding the means, the ways, we need to, as said, uh, ban these legal obstacles. It's not the proper or right me method, but this is what they chose, state uh, chose in that London protocol. So um, sometimes it, co it, it could seem as an arbitrage or limited, let's say. Um, so they, they were first dealing with the CO2 sequestration in the seabed and the fertilization, ocean fertilization and geoengineering activities. So that was another topic. But since the beginning, they went into those two parallel directions. First, sequestration, CO2 sequestration in the seabedded um, and on the other hand, the ocean fertilization and also other geoengineering activities. But anyways, in that legal framework, they were prepared beforehand, you see? So in order to deal with the CO2 sequestration in seabed, well, inside that protocol, in this London, uh, 1996 London protocol, they first adopted in 2006 during the first meeting, one actually resolution to allow sequestration, CO2 sequestration in seabed. So the London uh, protocol as adopted in 1996 was very, very strict, you know, and it banned any kind of uh, waste in, in, in the seas unless it accepted a very, very short list of materials which were not, um, I mean, jeopardizing the seas. So they added one more element, and this element is exactly CO2. So the proposal was made by Australia at that time, and it was welcomed by 12 states, so Norway, France, Spain, and others, obviously, and namely the European countries. So they all were in favor, right? 
and the resolution was adopted even though even though not all the countries were in favor but uh, they added one more point, CO2 flow could be inside the seabed. So for me, we didn't solve any action or any, you know, uh, issue which occurs in that kind of scenario and in London Protocol. They did not actually say where. Where, what, 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 I mean, what, what did they mean by the sea bed? Could be water, territorial waters, could be high waters, high seas, or, you know, what does that mean? So, allowing these, uh, these CO2 uh, flows means that also in the international waters and high seas, I mean, the legal waters, um, so it means that, you know, this is a first issue, right? still, of course, connected to this 1996 London Protocol. But not only what happened in 2009, so five years later, this uh, amendment, they adopted a new uh, resolution. This resolution was made to ban the, to avoid ex export of waste from one country to another. And, and that was a very, very severe uh, point of point six of the protocol. So when it was adopted, they wanted to limit any kind of activity, which means that, of course, uh, waste in waters. And in order to do so, they banned all the transports of waste, you know, in that objective, which was uh, to, to put them into the water. So any kind of movement was banned. So uh, what did they do? They just, uh, they just, you know, change that uh, aspect. It is one amendment of the protocol. This is actually connected to one article. So the amendment was proposed by Norway and it was adopted by 15 votes in favor, right? Five abstentions and one against the, the country against was China. China said, said we do not have enough information about the risk we are uh, taking with that decision. So we are against this uh, way, these waste inside the ocean, let's say. And also against the fact that they would, you know, uh, ban the export. So and China, China was the only one to be uh, against that amendment. So resolution was adopted and It's not really, I mean, it has not really taken uh, taken place because as it is an amendment of the convention, of the protocol, the procedure is more severe. So the amendment was adopted, but in order to be uh, to be used, you need to have two thirds of ratification, means exactly 36 states, but till now only nine states have ratified this amendment. So it exists, it is, uh, it has been voted, but it's not still in practice. So we are continuing, you know, the uh, works and uh, the debates to be against or to be in favor and so on. So it's actually, you know, in two places. Now, we have a third action or implementation, which is quite surprising. And since Emily just reminded me this, you know, topic, I found that we have in 2019, oh, sorry, in, yeah, in 2019, 
after one proposal from Norway and the Netherlands, we have one resolution approved for the application implementation of this uh, ban of exports. So as the states were not ready to ratify, they said, well, uh, we'll do it ourselves, by our thoughts. And this is actually a partial derogation for you know the different countries trying to apply and implement this uh, this amendment. So the resolution has been approved by consensus, and it is uh, in practice because it is an interpretation of these, you know, state of that protocol. No need to be approved uh, by anyone else. So. I mean, what is important is the, uh, you know, participation of that London protocol. And if you want to make a declaration saying, well, I am, you know, I have this opportunity to uh, have like cross border movements before that we ban this kind of procedure, blah, blah, blah. This is possible. But till now we have four countries which have actually participated to that and have, you know, invested themselves to export them. Uh, so we, we, we do not know if this is uh, you know possible about waste let's say co2 uh, waste so co2 sequestration sequestration so these are the netherlands norway denmark and the republic of korea so this is exactly what where we are right so i have a lot of doubts about legality or that provisional application, just, you know, shedding a light on this treaty. I think it's not possible to ban one interpretation which is inside a country because protocol is a treaty between parties, because you would, you know, have an internal resolution um, which would like free the parties and then allow, you know, this kind of practice. You should actually wait for the amendment to be, uh, to be done, to be put in practice. You see what I mean? So to, to, and to have it inter partes. So uh, this ban for me is not, has not any value. It's completely against the uh, convention. So I, I would like to, to, to add one more uh, word, actually, because, you know, I may not have time at the end, but all these Chapters of actions are led by, by scientists, not jurists, right? So everyone has its own role. So I think the legal aspect is totally forgotten, and you cannot decide in a political framework what to do with the, you know, seabed if it, this is juridic, national jurisdiction or beyond that. So you know, you cannot like decide any kind of rules if if it's valuable if it's possible or not. So we, we, you know, we need to really consider, you know, the whole debate and convention in that protocol, 1993 London Protocol. Well, so I said, uh, as for the sequestration, um, CO2 sequestration, we, we need, of course, to uh, uh, go beyond and states have continued other actions to allow in this framework, this protocol, uh, to have whether the, uh, I mean, the regulation of ocean fertilization and geo engineering activities having an impact on all the you know waters and uh, fertilization of oceans and as, as said uh, other geoengineering activities and this you know uh, goes beyond that because when the first resolution was adopted in 2008 to regular to have a regularization of these activities we didn't know anything else but we wanted to get into uh, depth this topic of co2 sequestration and also open the door to any kind of other geoengineering activity to be discovered right so people were cautious they just said you know it's 
inside the capacity of the London uh, protocol, and this is, you know, the very, very specific, uh, let's say, uh, framework. But till now, we will focus on that. So we will ban any kind of fertilization uh, from the uh, ocean, which would not be done for research. Let's say legitimate uh, scientific research. What did they mean, by the way, by legitimate scientific? research well who knows uh, you know what does it mean legitimate means that you know it's quite following uh, the general opinion so right so we 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 need to you know come back to that sequestration uh, co2 sequestration and then the proposal has as said you know been discussed also by australia adopted by consensus and uh, we we stopped here because we did not you know it, it is a very specific resolution saying this is the legal framework to be adopted and the London Protocol and so on. So we will decide till now that the uh, sequestration in the ocean must be done, but till now must be must stick to legitimate scientific research. Perfect. So what did we do? We went further, and this is the last one. I hope I'm not uh, too long. Right. So the second action implemented is in 2013, and that was uh, connected to the amendments uh, in a very, very, let's say, uh, wide spectrum. Wide spectrum about, you know, uh, any other elements beyond that spectrum. Um, uh, to allow more widely set, uh, fertilization, which means, you know, going for legitimate research and also uh, implementing those actions to allow other, or, or, or other shapes of, you know, uh, marine uh, geoengineering activities. And this is quite complex, by the way, contributing, you know, to a whole, you know, debate inside a protocol and so on, extremely complex. So uh, maybe a few words, if I may, we define, they define what is this fertilization and geoengineering, they actually have very, very banal or common uh, definition with a lot of, you know, list, uh, a list of other activities inside that uh, framework, the system and the protocol. But till now, it and as say attached to the text, but it's empty because you know it, it allows these marine uh, geoengineering activities, which are possible and are allowed inside, included in the list. But till now, there's only one thing in the list, which is the ocean fertilization for a legitimate uh, scientific research, which is you know dating from uh, 2013. The less the we do not have any more, uh, you know, elements. Uh, so, of course, we have a lot of, you know, groups and people gathering together with several countries, uh, namely Italy, to define, for example, what are these geoengineering activities? So, they started, you know, a wide list of activities, but then they ended with a very, where is my list? So I've lost it. I will, I hope to find it. Um, anyways, yes, here it is. So uh, this workshop, uh, you know, uh, still working on those topics to, I mean, define the whole, you know, uh, the whole list of geoengineering activities, they define four techniques, alkalinization, culture of macroalgae and other biomass for sequestration, and also uh, artificial uh, downwelling and particles, materials, reflecting materials as well, and 
of course also anything connected to this um, this marine cloud brightening now what has marine cloud brightening i mean in connect uh, has in, in connection with them with these topics this is really strange. Anyways, uh, you see, we do not have a legal framework. And this lack of framework is really uh, uh, an issue because uh, the trend is to develop this kind of scientific element and also, let's say, political framework to allow certain things which are not uh, present yet. And in regulation or in law in that you know legal aspects we you would so many things to add you cannot consider like the seabed as the unit and do whatever you want by anyone you know it's like completely crazy so uh we 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 need to consider these these, these you know terri territorial seas and con, you know any kind of international uh, waters. So you cannot actually deal with the atmosphere, with the um, uh, marine cloud brightening, and then also the CO2 sequestration or ocean fertilization. I mean, this is nonsense. So uh, anyway, uh, we we anyone has to you know express himself. If not, it will be like something like a melting pot. Thank you so much.